Hello, I'm Erin Marcus, founder and CEO of Conquer Your Business, and I want to welcome you to Ready Yet? If all you needed was a step-by-step -step plan of what to do, you could buy a book on how to succeed and you would be all set. But here's the rub. You'll never do what it takes until you become the person it takes to do it. The Ready Yet podcast is dedicated to those who are ready to become the person who succeeds, ready to become the person who steps into more, and ready to become the best version of themselves. In the I'm Ready interview series, join me for inspiring conversations with people who figured out who they needed to be in order to achieve their dreams and were brave enough to be that person. Hello, hello, and welcome to today's episode of the Ready Yet podcast, where I get the fortune of interviewing people and learning more about their stories and learning about how they figured out who they needed to be in order to do the things that they're wanting and trying to do. So I'm really excited today because I can introduce everyone to my new friend, Patty Block, because she was introduced to me by another podcast attendee, Brianna, who it's kind of like, you know, when you hit it off with one person, odds are you're going to hit it off with the people they introduce you to. And I am a big, big believer in networking and meeting all the amazing people there are out there to meet. So why don't you give folks a little bit more of an official introduction of who you are and what it is that you do? Wonderful. Thanks, Erin. I'm so glad to be here. So uh, my journey started in 2006. Of course, it started before then, but this is the second company that I've owned, and my focus is on helping women business owners grow and scale their businesses. But what I find is growing and scaling is not descriptive enough. It's really about how you shift your mindset and build your confidence so that your pricing reflects your value. Nice. And it's really a challenge for us as women, and we tend to undervalue ourselves and underprice. So I have built my company since 2006 to empower women business owners and help them price to reflect their value, as well as refine their sales process, sometimes create a sales process if they right. don't really have one, and also streamline operations and make sure that they're as efficient and as effective as they can be in delivering their services. Nice, because you could start charging more, but if it's costing you more to deliver it than it is, or you're scattered and can't deliver it. We've been talking about this in my group too, onboarding and delivering, because you could turn into a great salesperson and charge a lot of money. But if you can't deliver, gonna I, I've seen that happen in the speaking world where someone gets really good at speaking from a stage and making an offer, a compelling offer that a lot of people sign up for and they're kind of fall apart on the delivery. Absolutely. And, you know, the operations includes your staff as well and how yeah. you train your staff, who you hire, when you hire, their qualifications and skills and how trainable they are. So there's so much that goes into that. So I often serve as a type of, chief operating officer yeah, and help those, these, my clients to refine what they're doing. So one of the things I know being a woman of a certain age is we don't usually start out knowing our worth, let alone being able to help others find theirs. So how did you get into this? Like, what was your journey that led, were you in corporate before or one of those permanent entrepreneurs? So yes and yes. Yes. So the question in my mind started coming up, first of all, when I had my first company, which was many years ago, I was a political consultant and a lobbyist. Oh, wow. And it was a great opportunity. I loved it. It was fascinating and I'd never do it again. However, <laughs> say that a lot about a lot of things. That was amazing. I don't ever want to do that again. Exactly. Well, and everything that you've heard and imagined about the political world is true. Right. And that's not a world I wanted to continue living in. <laughs> so, 
but it was a great experience and I learned a lot and I have applied a lot of things, not only that I learned, but I used to teach because I used to teach candidates mm. about speaking, about political fundraising. And so all of those concepts are applicable out in the real world too. So that has actually been a, a great situation. They, the issue with value and you used a word a moment ago, and I want to highlight that. You talked about what you're worth. And I make a point of separating that out. Mm -hmm. Because what happens when we talk about what we're worth, everything gets conflated with your self-esteem sure. and how you view yourself. And you in my view, that's not what this is about. It's really about building value in the mind of your ideal buyer, helping them understand the value that you bring and how you can be such an asset to them. Well, and I love that separation. You know, my, my background is very strong in the marketing and I love the separation of worth and value because it will help clients bridge that gap where if you can talk about your business and your product, even if you have to talk about it in third person for a little while until your self-esteem gets there, that is a really great, you can use that as a tool I to agree. help people get to where they need to be. I agree. I think that's a really good way of looking at it. And also it makes it so much less personal. Yes. So you're not, I, I had one client who asked me, am I putting a price on my head? Right. <laughs> and it takes away that personal angst that you have around putting a price on your head or um, people thinking of you as a person as valuable or not valuable. Well, and one of the funny things that happened to me when I started to become a professional speaker, because I did a lot of speaking in my corporate life, but when I became a professional speaker where I was the product, I met, I had all these mentors doing amazing, amazing things. And so many of them referred to themselves in the third person. And it was so weird. But now I realize Aaron Marcus, the business is different than Aaron Marcus, the person. And so when they were doing that, it was, they weren't actually speaking about themselves. They were speaking about their business as its own entity, which yeah. is why I used to love using my name. And now I'm a fan of having a business name because I got it just away from that weirdness. Yes. And, you know, it's a really good point because as women, we take things very personally. Mm -hmm. And so it's really great if you can have a separation, whether it's real or imaginary, having that separation helps you not take things personally and not feel so hurt if there's a rejection or what you feel is a rejection. So it separates it out. And I really put a lot of emphasis on value, pricing for value, building value, yeah. perceived value, which is really about what your ideal buyer is perceiving about what you bring to the table and all of those pieces that fit together and allow you to price differently and to understand that pricing is the basis for everything, who you can hire, when you can hire, mm -hmm. how you manage your business everything is dependent on pricing. So it's interesting to me because I talk a lot because my background's corporate and I talk a lot about the things that I learned in my corporate career that helped me as an entrepreneur and those that kill me as an entrepreneur and how to overcome that. I would imagine politics, and you mentioned this before, would have that gift as well. There's things you learn that you never want to do again and things you learned that were very helpful. So how did you end up leaving the political world? So the, the quote politically correct answer <laughs> is that I made a choice. I did make a choice, but it was forced by a particular situation. And that is that I was 34 years old, had three little kids at home and a surprise divorce. And part of the political consulting and lobbying required a lot of travel. Yeah. So it became very quickly evident I needed to be home to stabilize things for my family. 
So I decided to close my business after eight years in business and, and having built it. And I was so proud of it and really grieved when I had to close my company. But I went to work for a nonprofit organization, an international school. And that was a fantastic opportunity. I started as director of development, marketing, public relations, and fundraising, and then became director of operations. And that was part of my my mission has become taking my experience in finance and operations and bringing that to the small business market. Absolutely. I think so many people get into their businesses to help people. They go through a lot of schooling and training or experience that allows them to do a good job at what it is that they do for a living, but they really don't have the management, the finance, the operations. They've never done that before. Right. And exactly. And the rules aren't really any different. The numbers might be bigger or smaller, but the theory is the same, whether you're a million dollar company or a $50,000 company. That's correct. And that allowed me to bring those skills and help, again, focus specifically on women business owners. And I work with women all over the country, but a business is a business, mm -hmm. regardless of the size and scale, and there are some basic things that every business needs and things that can make your life so much better as the business owner. It, your business doesn't have to be a, a burden. You don't have to feel like you're running around with competing priorities all the time. And I think and, that's something we get a little addicted to. And even, I don't even wanna say it, maybe it's addicted or maybe it's just a habit. We're yes. used to feeling that way. And I know I go through that, my, you know, as a Midwesterner with that work ethic, if I'm not a little scrambly, I think I'm doing something wrong. Like the only time I'm allowed to relax is when I've like actually left the country and I'm on a beach somewhere. And that doesn't have to be the case. That's correct. And your day to day can be more manageable and it goes back to pricing because more revenue buys you more choices. We used to say that in my corporate job, and I continue to say that volume solves all problems, right? Volume, you know, doing more business in one way or another sol basically solves a whole lot of problems. It can, but the distinction I'll make is it's not just volume because take the general consensus is I need more clients. I'll take on more clients and more clients and more clients. Well, that contributes to the busyness. Yes. But those may, those may not be ideal buyers. And I make a distinction between an ideal buyer and an ideal client. And so an ideal buyer, there's a particular fit. I, I think of sales like matchmaking. So if you don't have ideal buyers who turn into ideal clients and you're just taking more and more, it actually compounds your problem of juggling and competing priorities. Whereas if you fix your pricing and you're bringing in more revenue and working only with ideal buyers, it, everything starts to settle down yeah. and you are generating more revenue with less stress which is part of the whole concept that I bring to my clients. And you're solving so many different problems by bringing in more revenue. And for most of us, it's what we, it was the vision and the dream when we went into entrepreneurship. Yes, that's exactly right. I hope you're enjoying this episode of the Ready Yet podcast. I know I really enjoy having conversations about who you need to be in order to reach new heights. As founder and CEO of Conquer Your Business, I work with my clients at the intersection where what they need to do to succeed meets who they need to be to do it. If you would like to have a conversation about your business, please reach out to me at erin at conqueryourbusiness.com. So you had this amazing job. And yet, so I totally get why you left your first business and went to get a job. And then the way that I often describe leaving that type of situation, you either jumped back off the cliff. And in your case, it wasn't really a cliff because you had done it before, or you, maybe you got pushed off the cliff. So how did you find yourself back as an entrepreneur? 
No, I jumped. You jumped. <laughs> and the entire time I was at the international school, I was planning this company. And I had ideas and plans, and I'm a planner. So I was at the international school for about eight years. I was planning this company, but in reality, I was waiting for my kids mm. to get older and more independent because I was a single mom and I was really on my own. And I recognized that very early in my journey. So as my kids got older and I could, I felt like I had more freedom, mm -hmm. that I could quit my job and I could start this company. So it has been, it certainly has been a journey. I think we make the mistake and we're raised to believe that our life is going to be a straight line. And it never is. It never is. And one of the things you, you're saying without saying is you can have it all. You just might not be able to have it all at once. Yes. And a lot of us talk about money scarcity. That's a very big common theme in success mindset, but there's also a time scarcity problem. And so we feel this need to scramble to have it all at once. But if you line it up, you probably can have more of it sooner than you realize. I think that's right. And you can be more successful in what you're doing. And that was my intent in terms of planning for this company and then actually making it happen and building it. And then when I hit the 10 year mark, I decided I was ready for a new challenge. So I went completely virtual about four years ago and then also expanded nationwide. Nice. And so all of those things were steps in my journey and have been very successful because I was able to plan for them and then execute them in stages. Well, and one of the things you're, you're doing, so many times when I'm talking, there, there's the people who get ready to get ready, but then there's the people who get ready to take action. And that's a big distinction. I think you, you've got this wonderful best of both worlds going on because you're planning, but you don't stay forever planning. And then you have those of us, and I probably lean a little bit more towards this, that just go do. You probably could have used a little bit more planning, <laughs> but we just go do. When you get to the point where you learn how to marry the two of them, that's when the magic works. That's when life gets easier. So and, you're I, making, and you're making more money. And you're making more money. And remember... And so you know, one of the challenges is as women, we feel like we're greedy mm -hmm. if we earn more money or if we want to earn more money. Yeah. And what I help my clients and colleagues understand is you're not, it's not a greed issue. Having more revenue means you have choices. And that means you can impact your community, you can support your family, you can support your staff and provide jobs. There's so much that happens when women earn more. The idea, one of the ideas to me that I could actually, because you know, I have team members in this company and in my last business, I had 15 employees. The idea that I could help another person get a paycheck was just mind boggling when it, it's also a lot of pressure <laughs> when, you're, when you realize you're responsible for someone else's income. But the idea of giving back, not just through a charity, not just through volunteering, but the idea that providing a great place to work for another human being is a huge give and very, it very rewarding. It is. And that's what I hear almost every day from the people I work with. You know, it's interesting. I did a lot of market research to narrow down issues. And you had asked the question about how I kind of recognized this issue around pricing and sales and generating more revenue. And all the time that I was growing up, I, my mom used to make these fabulous cookies and the whole house would smell good and it was so warm and I just love these cookies. And all my growing up, I watched my mom eat the broken cookies. And it wasn't until I was a teenager that I finally asked her, mom, 
why are you always eating the broken cookies? Do they taste better? And she laughed and she said, no, I eat the broken cookies so you can have the whole ones. And that's what women are doing in our businesses. All the time. We are eating the broken cookies. And I have an acronym that I use that's related to a cookie jar. And that is justified additional revenue jar. And it is justified and you do deserve it. And it's taken me years to understand the dynamic and the mindset that we're struggling with. As women, no one is holding us back in our businesses except ourselves. Well, they don't need to. We're doing a damn good job of it on our own so many times. That's exactly right. And that has become my mission to change that. I love it. I absolutely love it because I come from male dominated corporate environments. I love the guys that I worked with. I did well in those environments. But as I got older and worked with more women, you see a different type of impact when women learn to do these things and embrace these things than when men do. And they, there's no shortage of amazing men out there doing great things. That's not what I'm trying to say, but the generational impact that it, it makes. And one of the things I love about you, and mine is completely different, but I know, I remember thinking about this the last time we chatted. I have a weird personality glitch where I am surrounded by bright colors. All the artwork in my room is all these bright colors. And yet I've got like my Punisher water bottle and mo I'm covered in tattoos. And most of the um, jewelry that I like aside from today is like chain mail and spiky. And you have this version of that in my mind where you have this amazing logic brain, right? You have a very analytical ability, very logic brain. And yet, and when I look at your artwork and when I look at, when I feel your energy and your delivery, there's a calm gentleness to it. And I think that's why you can have such a big impact because the abruptness or the just do this, the lack of insight that too many people have when they're giving directions, women can't hear it. There's too much in the middle, they can't hear it. And I think that's one of the things about you that allows you to bridge that gap and, and serve in a different way. Thank you, that's very kind. I, I am a very calm person and uh, Again, I probably learned a lot of these skills as a political consultant, because right. what you are as a political consultant is a diplomat. Yeah. You have to take a lot of difficult personalities and <laughs> imagine. Exactly. And a lot of egos. And you have to make all of that work so that the candidate can be successful or the cause that you're lobbying for can get heard. So, yes, I think a lot of those things came from that. And that is something my clients rely on mm -hmm. is the fact that I'm very calm and I help them really think through those issues and come up with good solutions. So thank you for that very nice compliment. I said that, you know, my last business was working with families with aging parents and our, one of our mottos was don't add to the drama. Those families are going through so much. If we're going to help them, we can't add to the drama, right? So I know you have something available for our listeners. In addition to your contact information, you have a quiz for them. So tell everybody, and if you need it, the website, the YouTube version will have the links. But if someone's just listening, how do they get a hold of this cool thing you have for them? So first, I love connecting with people on LinkedIn. So please reach out to me. It's Patty with a Y, Patty Block on LinkedIn. And when you do that, send me a note to say that you heard me on the podcast and I'm happy to connect with you. Awesome. Uh, and they can find you through me. If they can't, you know, go to me and look at my links and you'll, they'll, they'll find you front and center. Wonderful. Wonderful. And then my website is theblockgroup.net and I have all kinds of resources and I purposely post a lot of articles and free resources 
because my goal is to empower women business owners. And lastly, I have a quiz. I'd love for y'all to take the quiz. It's myrevenueroadblocks.com. And the purpose is to discover what's in your way. Why aren't you generating as much revenue as you like? Why might you feel stuck? And why are you always stressing about money? And it's to help raise awareness and to bring to the front what's happening in your business and where you're feeling stuck. So it's myrevenueroadblocks.com. Nice. Awesome. Thank you for giving everyone that. I think um, the easiest way to know if you need to take the quiz, if you're not making as much money as you want to make, you need to take the quiz. I mean, it's yes. pretty straightforward, right? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I know a lot of people can learn a lot of from your story and also a lot from the tips that you shared with us. So thank you so, so much for spending time with me. Thank you. This has been great. Thank you so much for joining me on the Ready Yet podcast. I get so motivated by the amazing accomplishments of the remarkable people I meet, and I'm excited to be able to share some of their stories with you. You can find more episodes of Ready Yet at your favorite source for podcasts or at conqueryourbusiness.com. And if you've already decided that you are ready to become the person you need to be to achieve your big goals, feel free to reach out to find out how I can support you in your efforts. Or check out the Work With Aaron page on the Conquer Your Business website. I also invite you to share this podcast with anyone you know who loves to learn and be inspired. And if you're so inclined, I'd be absolutely grateful for any reviews you'd like to share as well. Thanks again for joining me. This has been Aaron Marcus, hopefully inspiring and helping you to go conquer your big dreams.